All right, so uh, we got some knock sensor issues here with a uh, Freightliner Cascadia DD15 one box. So first thing we're going to do is hook up the uh, ProLink edge and uh, see what faults we actually have to begin with. Um, I got a little bit of background from the customer, but we like to look at everything first ourselves before we go any further. So with that, we're going to go ahead and put the key on and uh, do a vehicle scan. And this takes a couple minutes for everything to load up here. So we're going to look at our engine. And it's probably it on this one. So we're just going to load that one module. And again, it takes a couple seconds to load up. Okay, so we got three faults here. Um, one Knox raw sensor does not support self-diagnosis. Um, SCR outlet Knox sensor error. And so this would, this raw would be the inlet, and this would be the outlet. So you got the same ones. This particular customer, I think he bought some Knox sensors off of Amazon or eBay. I don't really recommend that because sometimes they're not the software in them or the way that they're set up isn't correct, and that's when we see that where it's not supported basically. So I got another machine that we're actually going to go over and hook up directly to the NOx sensors and uh, test them standalone and see if they're bad or not before we just throw one on there because they are quite expensive these days. So with that, uh, we'll go take the steps off to the other side and hook our other machine up. Okay, so we got our little uh, sensor def pump testing machine here that uh, came off the China boat. Really nice unit. You can test a lot of different sensors. It's got probably I probably got 30 different cable connectors. So, I mean, instead of just guessing and throwing a $600 knock sensor on here, we can actually test all the functions of it right here on this unit. So, it makes our job a little bit easier. So, we're not guessing, and two, it saves the customer some money. So, so we're going to test this uh, the inlet side. And to do that, we got to get up in here uh, with a little pick because these here's what the connector looks like. And these, uh, you kind of got to get up on a, on a knock sensor, you got to kind of get up underneath of them. And you got to kind of pull it out as you, these are kind of weird. As you push, put them in, you got to kind of press down on this at the same time. As you're pushing it in, and when you're taking them out, you got to kind of pull up and out at the same time. And I have no idea why that has like oil all over it. I'm going to spray that out um, with some non-chlorinated brake cleaner to get that oil out of there because I don't want oil all over my plug. <laughs> Plug this in. Right. And this is all touch screen, 12 volt knock sensor. Yeah. Usually on this machine, they'll run through like a five to 10 minute cycle because they'll actually heat up and then they'll test all this stuff here, all these different parameters. And it'll give me a reading if everything's correct. Um, obviously, the, what I've seen when they start, if they don't go at least three minutes, then they're bad. So this one went seven seconds. So obviously, uh, again, I wouldn't recommend. I mean, there's some good aftermarket lines out there. I wouldn't stuff off eBay and Amazon, I'd be a little bit leery of that because we've bought sensors and stuff like that when there were shortages and haven't had very good luck with them. So with that, uh, that unit's bad. So I'm going to take a new one out and test the brand new one and show you the difference. 
All right, everybody. So uh, those of you who've been around for a while, you know I was a former owner operator. About two years ago, I think we put out a video how to calculate your cost. I always do stuff by pen and paper and you know, a little bit harder. We had a young gentleman uh, named Igor reach out to us with a website he has developed, which has all that same stuff I was doing, plus a lot more in a website that's a free app, basically to where you can put all your cost in a fixed variable which you're making per mile. And it basically spits out a nice little report that's uh, gonna show you what you're making, uh, what you're losing. And then you can kind of play with things like put in different truck payment amounts, different freight rates and all that. Kind of tweak where you might need to make some improvement versus running more miles, paying a driver less, paying a driver more. So it's a really, really useful tool. If I was still driving, I would definitely be using it. I mean, the best part about it is that it's free. We put a link in the description below, so check it out. All right, so we got a new knock sensor here right out of the box. We're gonna go ahead and test it and see what we have. And again, these, uh, if you do have a machine like this, they will test the heaters and everything on these. Um, so we want to take this off and uh, make sure it's not touching anything. Yeah. So power's in range. I don't know why this says 24, but it's actually 12, so I don't know whether they're treating it like that. Um, so heat up is working. And then now once everything stabilizes, it should show that. So this takes about five minutes, so we'll, uh, we'll let it do its thing and recap after that. Okay, so we're about done with the test here. It's uh, almost to five minutes, and that's usually what, the, what they run. Uh, so as you can see, the NOx PPM is 3.6, which uh, we will want to be less than 30. Or, sorry, three, it's fluctuating, so. But it, it's less than 30, so that's a pass. Oxygen concentration is 21%, so that's within range. I mean, everything else here is in range, so this is obviously a, a good NOx sensor to throw in. So that's why we'd have like, test them, even new ones I usually test because I have had bad ones right out of the packet in the past. So it's, uh, so it's good to, to test them prior or instead of, and that way, if I test them before it's installed in the truck, it's easier for me to get a warranty or return the item and get another one. So as you see, it finished up and uh, no errors were found. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, install these sensors, clear everything do a regen and um, get this guy back down the road. So I guess in summary, or the moral of the story here is, um, be kind of careful where you purchase your NOx sensors from and uh, sensors in general. I've bought stuff off of eBay before that, like uh, IMAP sensors, you know, your intake manifold pressure sensors, when there was a shortage of those last year. And it looks like a Cummins box and everything, but it almost looked like they were copies and guys were buying 10 of them at a time and throwing half of them away because they weren't right. So just kind of be careful with that stuff because it can cause you a lot of aggravation and a waste of money. Usually with NOx sensors, I mean, um, we have a good aftermarket line that I trust, but with a lot of stuff, I usually just go with OEM, so for the most part. So that's kind of a moral story here.